Hi, I'm Ed Sperling. I'm the editor in chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Synopsys with Hezi Sar, who's going to talk today about how to design for high resolution displays. So, what's happening in the high resolution mobile display market, and what are some of the problems that designers are running into? Yeah, we're starting to see more and more uh, high resolution displays coming into the mobile market, supporting 2K and even 4K displays in smartphones and in tablets. And what uh, we are seeing is the high pressure from OEMs into the semiconductor players, how to maintain cost and power within reason. So for that, we are seeing the continuous use of the DSi transport, but adding to that the VESA DSC encoder and decoder, which allowing you to have more cost-effective uh, implementation in the system. And one of the problems in the display world is that the display has always been the, the part that sucks down most of your battery life, right? Exactly. Uh, the display is one of the most uh, uh, power-consuming uh, hogs in the system. And uh, what we are seeing also is the fact that you need to maintain the screen um, in high resolution. It's allowing you to really, driving you to have a faster switching, which increases the power consumption even further. Is this all very advanced node type of design, or does it go back to older nodes as well? Yeah, so um, we see the display driver market as one unity and the application processor market as a different one, which, so the application processor market continues to drive to um, um, uh, extreme um, uh, low-end, uh, uh, sorry, high-end nodes. So 16 nanometer and beyond right now. This is what we're seeing on application processor. While the display drivers still maintain their design in a fairly high, uh, old process nodes. That really provides a challenge how to because the design cycle is completely different between the display driver players while the application processors are actually driving their design cycle much faster. So what are we looking at here? Yeah, we're looking at a typical implementation of a high-end application processor uh, implemented in a smartphone or in tablet. So uh, the display um, subsystem typically includes the MIPI DSI host controller and the DeFi, which both transmit the pixels out to the display driver uh, that connects to the display module itself. And the display driver receives the signal through the DeFi and the DSi device controller to be displayed. What we're seeing, as we have uh, said uh, really before, application processor are driving into a completely high uh, uh, process nodes, while the display drivers lag behind. Uh, so the, the cycle, the design cycle for application processor is much faster than this one. What uh, the industry is struggling with is how to satisfy the high resolution displays by both components. So in order for <clears throat> the whole subsystem to implement the entire bandwidth that keep on increasing and increasing and increasing, what the industry came up with is a collaboration between the VESA DSC uh, standard and the MIP DSI or display work that allowing you to add a component. So this is the DSI encoder on the application processor side and DSC decoder on the display driver side. Both of them allowing you to take the pixel, the, the pixel or the video stream that needs to be displayed and to compress it by two or by three. It's just done by real time with low latency, visually lost this implementation and transmit that through the DSI transport to the other side and where it is being decoded and displayed. So we're talking about uh, half or one-third of the bandwidth that needs to be transmitted, allowing you to keep your power and area budget and EMI low. In the past, how was this done? What was different? So in the past, uh, you did not have the DSC encoder or decoder on both sides, so you typically have um, a reasonable amount of uh, data to transmit to the other side. The technology implementing DeFi and DSI was able to transmit let's say a 4 gig um, uh, from one side to the other, but right now the traffic is much higher than that. And allowing you to reduce the traffic by 2 or by 3 with the compression, allowing you really to reduce power, reducing EMI, and actually maintaining the cost. So all of that is actually going to go down by the implementation of adding the DSC encoder and encoder. What's the impact of greater bandwidth? Does it depend on things like the uh, interconnect between the different chips and the different parts of the, the on, in a device, or is it uh, other factors as well? Yeah, so it's a complete system. We are right now seeing uh, Wi-Fi data streams going up, 4G, LTE, all of that is being uh, utilized. USB 3 bandwidths are being used. 
uh, JEDEC UFS is being used. So all of that really requiring a high data transmission from the cloud uh, to the cell, to the actually to the cell phone itself and the tablet. So all of that needs to be displayed. And we're really showing here one side of the impact. So higher resolution displays is required because the video stream is becoming more um, demanding. So I'm an SSC designer. What do I need to think about when I'm designing a chip versus what I was doing in the past? Yeah, so what you need to think about is what kind of display resolution you will need to support in the future and what kind of display drivers will be utilized in the system. As we're seeing, the high-end smartphones and tablets are right now employing this kind of uh, connectivity. It means that you need to future-proof your design when you go and design your next chip. For you to allowing you to uh, support those higher resolution without the need to redesign your subsystem for the display. Are you finding this only in the most advanced type of uh, smartphones, or is it now seeping down into some of the, the mainstream models as well? Yeah, so for today, we are seeing it only in high end implementations. However, we believe this is a very economical and very good way to implement a system. And actually, I will show that to you in the next um, side of, of, of the whiteboard here, where you actually see how you can reduce the power, reduce EMI, reuse the architecture. So that overall uh, approach allowing you to have a more cost-effective and lower risk implementation. OK, so in uh, this implementation, we are showing here the application processor on the left-hand side and the display on the, on the right-hand side. Uh, we are showing here that the video stream coming to the DSC encoder uh, typically used to be implemented and transmitted through the DSI, transport the D5 to the display side. Um, today, in a tablet kind of application, we'll take that as an example. Most designers are right now looking at a 4K display. And this is typically done with a 16 frames per second implementation and 24 bits per pixel. Uh, this kind of bandwidth uh, give you a slightly more than 14 gigabits per second that need to be transmitted uh, from the, um, the, the up, upstream pixel to the other side, to the display. So what uh, we are seeing in the implementation right now is DSC encoder is being added as a component that allowing you to use a by two or by three compression. In this example, we use a by two compression. So this is all done real time, low latency, visually lossless kind of implementation, giving you a seven gig uh, bit per second if you use two X uh, compression. So seven gig, um, gigabit per second uh, needs to be transmitted. Um, what, what we are seeing in tablets is this kind of stream is actually then divided into two, so two halves, a first one and a second one. It's been transmitted into two separate streams over here. These are two identical streams that go through the DSI host controller, which puts them in the right frame based on the protocol, and transmitting it to the D5. And in this example, if we're looking into um, a four lane. So when we divide the seven gig into two halves, you actually have about 3.5 gig for each stream over here. So 3.5 gig uh, over four lanes of um, uh, DeFi, allowing you to use one gigabit per second per lane uh, for each one of the DeFi's and connecting that to a four lane DeFi on the DDIC. So you actually have two DDICs in deploying DeFi at a one gig each and uh, transmitting the signal to uh, one half and the second half over here. It's important to mention there is a synchronization signal between the DDIC just to allow to make sure that the image on both halves is synchronized between the two sides. What were people using in the previous generations? Was it uh, fewer uh, channels going through? Uh, yeah, so there are multiple displays that have been used, so two-lane and four-lane displays, but the common implementation was actually um, uh, up to one gigabit per second per lane. This is multiple technology limitations on the display drivers. So this kind of implementation allowing you to reduce the data rate to one gig and below, allowing you to reuse the DDIC's implementation and only adding the DSC uh, decoder um, into those kind of components. Again, allowing you to really reuse the architecture, reducing the risk, reducing the power consumption, reducing the EMI, where with um, at a bandwidth you could not implement it differently. 
So how far does this go? How, how many uh, uh, gigabits are we going to be seeing per second? How uh, good resolution can we get to? Yeah, so this is uh, really dependent on consumers. Uh, we are seeing 4K displays in tablets and we're seeing 2K and more displays in smartphones. Um, I, I don't see actually the limit at this point of time because you can actually use by two, you can use by three, you can have multiple DSi ports, you can have four. Um, we can go wider, uh, but really what we're trying to do or what the market is trying to do is really have some sense in it. So it needs to be fairly uh, cost effective. It's to maintain the power budget, it needs to be aware of EMI and the risk. So we're um, not necessarily being driven only by resolution, but also by optimizing the implementation itself. So you've drawn out a tablet here, but the majority of the market is going to be smartphones. How does that change? Exactly. So what we're seeing today uh, in the smartphone kind of implementation is very similar to this. The only thing is that half of the equation is not being used, so you don't have to split the image into two. So 4K display is not a common use in smartphones. We use 2K and beyond for that. So still, you want to reduce the bandwidth to a reasonable level. Uh, utilizing a DSC encoder and not dividing it into two, but utilizing a single stream still gets you to the 3.5 or 4 gig that you want to implement. And uh, for that, uh, this is really what we're seeing. So still being able to service that with DSC encoder utilizing a by two. Uh, so it's more in an economical way, but you have only a four lane uh, DeFi that is being utilized here. And what you're doing is taking a, uh, an architectural approach to solving this problem, but hiding that from the uh, design teach, right? Correct. And uh, this is actually brings up a good point. We're hiding it in a very uh, good way because the VESA DSC came up with an algorithm that allowing it to be visually lossless. So it's uh, hardly noticeable to, to a person. It's, the, the encoding itself is done real time. There is actually very low latency in the implementation itself. It's future proof. It's by two or by three, um, and it is standard. So it has been uh, done with a collaboration with um, uh, MIPI Display Workgroup. So supporting it across the board, allowing you interoperability between multiple application processors and displays. So if you're a designer, what are you watching out for? What, what, what's going to get you here that you had planned? Yeah, what you get you here is really utilizing a mature solution that can be interoperable to the other side. So utilizing a DSC encoder and DSI host and DeFi and make sure all these three components play together in the right way is the most challenging right now because this is a fairly new implementation. So when you're at the advanced node, you're probably looking at a new design every six months to a year and, and certainly on every node every couple of years. How do you maximize what your investment is here to make sure that you minimize the design time and, and frustration of your next node? Yeah, so designers have a lot of challenges because they also need to be low risk and meet the timeline for the design. But the second time, they also need to look at how to future-proof their design. So we talked about DSC encoder and decoder becoming uh, more of a need, but it's just starting to show up. So implementing that as an option in, in your design is something that you need to consider. At the same time, having the... DSI host controller which support the latest specification and DeFi that supports the latest specification, latest speeds, um, allowing you to really to capture the majority of the market going forward because we know th something for sure, nothing's going to be stagnant. As we started, thank you very much for a great explanation. Thank you.